What is up everybody, welcome back to another video, my name is Tim Poirts and in today's video it's going to be a post for post with how to tech, his channel link is going to be down below guys, go check him out, he's so good at tech guys, go check him out, he's so underrated, remember guys this is a post for post so don't leave it below, I'm copying his video or anything like that, as he did let me use this and a uh, video is going to be going up on his channel rather um, tomorrow or the other day and also on Friday or Saturday we'll be making a video together, I'm not going to spoil it guys, but yeah make sure you hit a like hey, down below. Hey what is going on you guys, how to tech here back with another video and today I put together an insane $500 PC build for you guys. Uh, it's going to perform the best in this price bracket. It's easily going to outperform any other build out there. So let's get right into the video. So let's jump right into this with the case and for the case I went with the Corsair Carbide Spec-01 and you may recognize this from one of my other builds and that's because it is one of my favorite cases. For $50, this is easily the best case in this price racket. It even outmatches cases that cost $70. And I'll say that because the built-in cable management is very well, the build quality, and the overall design. Now, I'm a really big fan of the design because it has that gaming look, but it's not overly flashy, yet it has that red LED accent look to it, and it's just an overall great looking case. And it's not huge, so it's a, mid it's a nice mid-tower case. And I'm not a fan of those huge cases anyway. I like the smaller ones. So this one is definitely one of my favorite cases in this price range. There's a lot of working space. And like I said, it hides the cables very well. So let's move on with it. So next up, we have the power supplies. And boy, oh boy, uh, these things are something. The prices fluctuate so much. So what I'm going to do is link three of them down in the description below. And the one I went with for this build was $40 today. Uh, April 3rd and it's the 500 watt bronze EVGA version so I'm going to link down the 400, 430 and 500 watt variants of this power supply just because the prices fluctuate sometimes the 400 watt costs the same as the 500 watt it's all over the place but this series of power supplies they're very great they're lasting me years I've only used the EVGA ones to be honest with you I haven't really used any other brands because these ones are cheap yet high quality and they come with like five or ten year warranties for $30 to $50, that's about what these things cost. Like I said, the 500 watt bronze edition that I got was 40. And like I said, they're all 80 plus, ah, 80 plus rated. So they're high quality power supplies. The only downfall is they're not modular or even semi-modular. But for 40 bucks, can you complain really? It's a really good power supply and it'll power a high tier graphics card. And also, uh, before I forget to mention, um, if you're going to buy any of these parts, please use the links from the description because uh, they're Amazon affiliate links and I'll get a kickback for it and that would just be appreciated. But speaking of graphics cards, I for the graphics card, we actually went with a 480 over the 1060 for this one and that was purely because of the price. Uh, so we got a 4GB white Asus 480 and I believe it's an overclocked edition for $185. And that's just a great deal. If the 1060 was a little cheaper, I would go with that. But this is personal preference, really. But to fit under the $500 budget, we went the, with the 480 instead. And I'm very happy with it. They're very closely competitive anyway. And they're going to play all the games out today in 60 FPS, 1080p, no problem whatsoever. It's a great graphics card. I'm going to post some benchmarks at the end of this video, uh, showcasing the performance of this build as well. So great graphics card. They last a long time. There's not much else you could say about a graphics card. I do have a complaint though, this particular model is white and really doesn't match the theme of our build, but there's so many models of graphics cards that you can pick a different brand like a Gigabyte or XFX. I just went with this one because it was the cheaper one at the time, but that's open to interpretation and you can pick whatever you want. Now I'm sure you have an idea for which CPU I went for, and I actually went with the G4560 yet again in this build, and that's because the performance is so close to the i3 that it costs like $40 more. There's no reason to get the i3, just get the Pentium. The only issue with this is it's constantly out of stock lately. So I don't think it's in Amazon right now, but I'm leaving the link there just in case. But this CPU is $70 on other websites. Uh, B&H comes to mind. Uh, they're restocking in like three days. And this CPU is just amazing. Uh, it tops the G3258 from last series. And it's just one of my favorite CPUs. The performance is outstanding. For $70, it's the best budget CPU out there really in the market. There hasn't been any competitor to it. The closest competitor costs like $110. Uh, this CPU is just amazing. It is the perfect pair for this graphics card. You could go with an i3 if you want. I wouldn't recommend it. The extra $40 is just not worth it, but that's up to you. So I'm going to go with the G4560 for this one. 
So now with the motherboard, I just went with the generic old simple motherboard. Now, something interesting about this is if you go with a last generation motherboard, it'll cost you like $20 less, but you're going to need a CPU in order to update the BIOS because the Pentium will not work out of the box with this motherboard. So I'm going to actually include two motherboards in the description. Uh, the one is $20, around $20 more, but this is just a budget ASRock motherboard, 32 gigs of RAM max, standard stuff. Uh, the only thing to note with this one is there's actually no HDMI port, it is only a DVI port. So keep that in mind, but it's not like it really matters since you're going to be using a graphics card as the display adapter anyway. So it doesn't matter if there's not a HDMI port to begin with. So the motherboard situation, like I said, it's interesting how it won't support the Pentium out of the box. So keep that in mind and do not accidentally buy the wrong motherboard. Make sure if you don't have a processor to update the BIOS, make sure you get the B250M model that I link as well for around $65. And now, let's just get the hard drive out of the way. You've heard the name enough, plenty of times. I hear it in my sleep, I say it that many times. But that's the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 7200 RPM hard drive for $45. I don't know what else to say about it. Best hard drive for the money. You get a terabyte of space for 45 bucks. It's fast enough. It's not crazy fast because it's a hard drive, but what else can you ask for? A terabyte for $45, that's all I have to say about it talk about this hard drive all the time I use it in pretty much all of my builds and it's just a really good well respected well respected brand of hard drives anyway I've tried Seagate ones but the Western Digital ones just seem to be slightly faster and they seem to last longer from what I've read so I kind of just wanted to blow past the hard drive since I talk about it all the time and let's get on with the RAM to finish off this build and if you stick around this long uh, you're a champ leave a like drop a comment you know you know so for the RAM we went with a vengeance stick uh, 8 gigabytes DDR4, 2400 megahertz, and it's the black, or you can get whatever color you want, it don't matter. It's all the same, RAM's all the same. 58 bucks. I still think that the price should go down to 50. I would like that very much, it just seems to make sense. 50 bucks for 8 gigabytes, but it's 58 dollars. 8 dollars doesn't bother me too much. And for 8 gigabytes, that is still great in 2017. Whoever says you need 16 gigabytes of RAM, I don't know, their heads up their ass, don't listen to them. I've played with 8GB, I upgraded to 16 and I noticed zero performance increase. I think it was 2 FPS actually, and I don't get any stutter or anything in any games. So 16 gigs is unnecessary, especially for a $500 build, that would just take away too much from the rest of it. So 8GB of RAM, like I said, is perfect in 2017. And that about wraps it up for this build you guys. I was very happy with how this build came out, for the price, it's just an excellent PC. And when those new Ryzen chips come out, it's just going to get even better and better. The market is just amazing right now. Stuff keeps getting cheaper and you're getting more performance for your money. So if you enjoyed today's video, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe. And like I said in the beginning, uh, just make sure you use the affiliate links in the description if you're going to order any of these parts. So thank you for watching. How to Tech, signing out.